morning, John. Hey, Javier. Good to see you again. Good to see you too. Don uh, Shu, he's a product planner for Hyundai USA. And here we're at the launch. I was going to say a launch for a new car, but actually it's the launch for three cars. Three right? new cars, yes, sir. It's a Hyundai Ionic. And mm -hmm. um, I understand it took you guys 11 years to develop this car from the, from the scratch, concept. right? Yes. So tell us, tell us a little bit of the story because it's pretty interesting. Yeah. I think. I think one of the things that we wanted to focus on in our dedicated like, dedicated alternative powertrain vehicle was how do we best make an impact as our first kind of alternative powertrain, yeah. um, dedicated alternative powertrain vehicle. One of the things that we wanted to focus on was giving customers the power of choice. So Ionic will be the first uh, vehicle platform to be available in three electrified powertrains. So we have the hybrid, the electric and the plug-in hybrid all launching around the same time. And there's a huge advantage uh, in building a car from scratch thinking that it's going to be an electrified car, right? Because you pretty much build the car around the battery, we, we can say. Yes, um, not just the battery, but uh, aerodynamics. I mean, the, yeah, the, yes. uh, yeah, the, the uh, whole vehicle concept from beginning to the end is kind of focused on efficiency. And we can focus on that a lot more by yeah. having a dedicated platform. Hybrid, plug-in hybrid, and electric. Mm -hmm. um, but also I understand there's a hybrid. We're calling it the Ionic Blue. Oh, the and it's a blue. blue trim. The blue trim, yeah. And that is coming in at 58 miles per gallon combined, which is the highest of any uh, vehicle sold in the U.S. And what makes the difference? Because that's a significant uh, difference in mileage. Yes, uh, between the Ionic Blue and the other Ionic hybrids, is a three uh, miles per gallon difference. So Ionic Blue getting 58, and the other models getting 55 miles per gallon. Uh, the biggest difference has to do with uh, test weight. Uh, so the vehicle is a little bit lighter, uh, okay. very much from a structural standpoint, it's the same vehicle. Uh, but by having a separate homologation, separate certification, we're able to get a higher fuel economy on that vehicle. Um, during this uh, morning presentation, there was a Michelin display there and I understand the tires make a huge difference and actually one of the experts from Michelin was telling me that 20, up to 20% of the energy of the that the that the engine sends to the tire is lost through heat and mm -hmm. other other kind of uh, physical yes, phenomenon, uh, but the, with the wheel that they develop for this car, it makes it even more efficient, right? Yes. So uh, wheels uh, and tires play a very critical role, and the Michelin Energy Saver AS tires that we apply on the Ionic model, especially for the blue trip, has really low rolling resistance, which improves just the, uh, overall friction, so it reduces friction which improves just overall efficiency of the vehicle. And also wheels play a very critical role as well. So on the blue trim, we have eco-spoke uh, wheels, okay. um, which is a little bit more closed off design for improved coefficient of drag. So reduces more of the drive loss as well. So in these uh, kind of electrified cars, every little aspect helps, right? Like that, like the aerodynamics, the air vents, the the spoiler in the back, yes. every little aspect like contributes to the efficiency. Yes, exactly. So with the aerodynamic efficiency, efficiency with the driving loss, like you mentioned, the rear spoiler, the integrated rear spoiler, the air curtains in the front, even our grill design has active air flaps incorporated into the overall grill design. So every little bit helps for aerodynamic efficiency, which leads to improved fuel economy. So uh, let's go back again and review a little bit of the hybrid up to 58, then the plug-in hybrid, what's the mileage for that one? Uh, plug-in hybrid will be released in the fourth quarter of okay, this year. Okay, so the no there's the numbers, yeah. Uh, but what we can tell you is all our internal testing and estimates show that the all-electric range on the plug-in hybrid will be more than 27 miles of all-electric. Well, pure electric. electric. Wow. Pure electric drive. And then once that's depleted, it'll be almost as efficient as our hybrid model. Uh, a little bit less because it has the additional battery capacity Absolutely. at 8.8 .8 kilowatt hours, so 8.9 kilowatt hours, so it comes in a little bit heavier. But after the electric range is depleted, it operates almost as efficiently as just a regular hybrid. And then we have this one, which is the pure electric, and uh, this one has a range of uh, 124 miles well, 124. range. But the great thing about the, our Ionic Electric is it's the world's most efficient vehicle. At 136 mpge, it is the most efficient electric vehicle or any vehicle available in the marketplace. 
So in the electric, uh, fuel electric segment, there's obviously a lot of competition started, I guess, back with the Leaf. Yes. Then uh, the Bolt EV. And uh, I guess the Mitsubishi I met, but they don't sell that many of them, so I don't uh, know if they, you really... They were the, one of the first to be released, yes. Exactly. So, but uh, I guess the, the main competitor here, we can say, it's the Bolt EV, which, uh, as we know, has 238 yes. range. But um, I guess you have an advantage in pricing with this car. I mean, you get 124, but pricing is uh, significantly lower yes so uh, one of the things that we like to show what we like to think about internally at Hyundai's is all electric range um, is great it's kind of like horsepower or number of cylinders or yeah. towing capacity some people do want more and they require more uh, the big question is uh, how much are they willing to pay for that additional uh, benefit yeah. For example, uh, the Bolt, the Chevrolet Bolt that you mentioned, has 238 miles of electric range, which is 114 miles more than us. Our MSRP difference, so our starting price difference, is more than $7,100. Yeah, That's significant. we have a price yeah. advantage. Yeah. And just a little bit of reference, um, by having such a big price difference between the two, we're giving customers the choice. So there's those that do require higher driving ranges, on a daily basis and the Bolt is a great vehicle for them but for those 98% of Americans that do not drive more than 100 miles daily actually think, actually uh, the average is much less than that right the average uh, average miles driven in a day by average Americans is uh, 43 miles yeah less, so you got right? more than enough yeah. <laughs> so um, in, in that regard we think that we have a very compelling value proposition for compact car buyers to buy a vehicle because our starting price of the electric is $29,500. Yeah. That's before the federal incentives? Yes, that's wow. before the federal tax credit, uh, which is a $7,500 tax credit. Yeah. So, in effect, it's $22,000. Uh, if you live in the state of California, which we're in right now, uh, you get $2,500 clean vehicle uh, uh, rebate. And that's even in some cities? At the city level, and also if you work for some company that supports this kind of technology, you get like even more incentives. Yes, there's that, even right? more incentives. Definitely. So you have to do your homework. Yes, yes. I think a lot of there's a lot of resources out there um, that shows the different incentive levels. Okay, one more question about the uh, electric plug-in hybrids, uh, hybrid cars. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's still a very small fragment of the of the sales volume in the U.S. I believe like around three percent or yes. less than three percent. So why is Hyundai betting on this technology? That's a great question and something that we're more forward looking in. Um, so I think you're definitely right in that the traction for these alternative powertrain vehicles have plateaued a little bit in the past couple of years, especially given fuel prices Cheap gas, yeah. <laughs> being the way they are. But one of the things that we really see is among younger buyers, so among millennials, who are forecasted to be about 40% of all new vehicle sales by 2020, their preference for alternative powertrain vehicles and the influence that it has on their purchase decision is a lot greater than other generations. Yeah. So if we're looking forward to uh, to the near future, we see a lot more opportunity for these alternative powertrain vehicles. And the fact is, the number one rejection reason for alternative powertrain vehicles is people don't see the inherent value in it. Yeah. Whether they it cost too much initially. Cost too much initially. initially. Yeah. So I think value is paid space that Hyundai owns. Yeah. The value for the money. I mean, I have to agree with that because, I mean, that's been your uh, philosophy and one of the keys to your success in the U.S. Yes, definitely. I mean, you've been packaging a lot of technology, a lot of uh, cool design and everything in cars that are really affordable. So, mm -hmm. now with this one, you enter a new, completely new segment, but, uh, and I guess you weren't the first, obviously, <laughs> but uh, sometimes it's worth waiting, right? Yes, yes, we definitely think so, and like you said, it was 11 years in the works. Yeah. So just to give a little bit of perspective, our average vehicles, you know, they're five-year life cycles. Yeah. So it was more, um, how do I say, it was a lot more careful planning, a lot more development to release a vehicle with world-class efficiency and to be offering customers a power of choice with these three alternative powertrains. So pretty amazing you develop a car and like even though again you were in the first one now you're number one so that's not about not about yeah to do. yeah I think uh, we wanted to come out with a bang and I think that we were able to do so.
Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time. Always uh, very interesting talking to you and uh, very enjoyable driving your cars. And uh, so we're gonna continue here now. We're in the electric. We're gonna drive back to the hotel. And again, the range is 124. Yeah. It's gonna be more than enough. And then we're gonna go there. And there's like fast charging station. Which, by the way, they're they're like getting more and more everywhere, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, so DC fast charging, which is uh, called level three charging, yeah. uh, that can support up to 100 kilowatt. Uh, speeds. So basically the proliferation of these DC fast charging stations, especially along the coast, the east and west coast, is uh, is growing tremendously. So the infrastructure is there and our ionic electric vehicle comes standard with DC fast charge capability. Oh, it's included? Yes. Oh wow, that's right. every electric. And also, um, I guess, I, I've driven electric cars for, and I don't know how long now, like <laughs> a few years. Mm -hmm. And I always say there's a learning curve to adapt to this technology, right? But if, if you think about one time I was talking to a guy who was thinking of switching to diesel back then when diesel was like more acceptable <laughs> in the yes. US before the, <laughs> the Volkswagen <laughs> mess. And he was saying, no, 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 because I don't, I don't have diesel stations around my house. <laughs> and the truth is that you don't pay attention when you don't need it, right? Exactly. So with this, it's the same thing. You start to adapt, you start to start looking where's the charging station you plug in for here like if you can charge what in the fast charging station 80% uh, in 20 minutes that's more than enough right yes yes 80% in uh, 23 minutes for yeah. a vehicle if it's 100 kilowatts and that will get you about 99 to 100 miles of range so uh, a lot of these TC fast charge stations are at very populated yeah. malls so it's more convenient for you to go grab coffee. Another advantage, I was recently in an electric car and I pulled out into my supermarket and again, I never noticed it. Uh -huh. And then I'm driving, it's like a preference parking with yes. free charging while you shop. Yes, yes. Usually it takes more than 20 minutes. So yeah. then there you go. So pay attention, give it a chance. It's a great technology. And like one great feeling that you're going to have after a few weeks or months. Mm -hmm. That you're gonna say, wow, you haven't stopped at a gas station. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely that saves on your pocketbooks. And that can be also the truth for the plug-in hybrid. You still need some gas, but the, the intervals of stopping to the gas station are gonna be much longer. Yes, it's completely dependent on how often you charge the vehicle. So if you're charging the vehicle overnight and charging the vehicle during the day at work, you and if your commute's less than 27 miles, you're essentially you not go. using any gasoline. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we're going to use the electric energy of this car to get back to the hotel. So thank you very much, John, for everything, and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank I you hope. very much, Javier. Thank <laughs> you.